You can chain me, you can torture me, you can destroy my body, but you can't imprison my mind. Well, Julian, Julian, you have won the right to say this, but we don't have the right to agree with him. We have a duty. We have a duty to stop them from destroying Julian's body. We have a duty not to let them continue his torture. Comrades, first they came for Julian. Next they will come for our comrades, our friends, our neighbors. Immediately after that they will come for the good people of The Guardian and of the BBC. They will go after anyone who dares challenge the right of power of the oligarchy without frontiers to commit crimes against humanity in our name without our knowledge. Do you remember some months ago, Mike Pompeo, let me remind you who that gentleman is, he was Trump's first choice for CIA director and currently the Secretary of State. He described WikiLeaks as a non-governmental, hostile intelligence service. You know what? He's right. This is exactly what WikiLeaks is. But also, it is exactly what any self-regarding newspaper, television station, radio station should be. A non-governmental intelligence service on behalf of citizens that are looking critically at their government. Dan Ellsberg, that wonderful whistleblower, one of my greatest heroes, and Noam Chomsky, another hero of ours. They warned the journalists who are failing so spectacularly to defend Julian today. They warned them, you are next. You are on a hit list with a ranking order, the hit list of President Trump, who considers all of the press to be the enemy of the people. When you turn a blind eye to Julian's torture, you are consenting to your own emasculation. That is our message to the BBC. That is our message to The Guardian. Of course, you do not need me to lecture you. Because by being here, you have proven that you know all that. But you've also acquired a duty, we all have, to let into the secret those who are not here today. Because, you know, Julian's worst enemy, freedom's worst enemy, are not evil people in smoke-filled rooms plotting against good people. No. Julian's worst enemy, freedom's worst enemy, is apathy. It is fatigue. It is good people, too tired, too exhausted, too disheartened, working zero hour contracts, whatever, to be able to expend the energy that you and I have the privilege of expending today. It is banality. It is people who are neither good nor bad working in these offices in Whitehall. No, they're not evil. They're just banal too banal to care. We have to make them care. On the 10th of March, in a few days' time, one of the projects that Julian and I started is going to see the light of day. Watch out for Euroleaks. Soon after we met, together with Brian Eno, who hates being in this very small clique, but it's not a small clique because, as Brian knows, what we started with Julian Assange in February 2016 in Berlin, the Democracy in Europe movement now has tens of thousands of members everywhere. As we speak, a similar demonstration is taking place in Athens with our members of parliament representing the movement that Julian Assange helped to put together. Tomorrow, I'm going to be in Mel Belmarsh visiting together with John Shifton Julian's magnificent father, Julian. I will go in there with trepidation and a sense of guilt because I'm going to walk in there, but I'm also going to walk out